Um, let's see here. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we are really glad that there's uh, so many of you here. Um, we're going to be, for the people who can't make it, we are going to be um, uh, recording this and putting it on the podcast and putting it on um, YouTube. So, uh, but we will go ahead and get started so we can get through everyone. So, I'm Jesse Sage. I am the host of the Peep Show podcast and the founder of Peep Show Media. And my co-founder is PJ, who's going to pop in and make an appearance mm -hmm. in front of this purple light. That was his uh, <laughs> thing for today. So, um, and we also have running this. Uh, Liz is our intern. Liz isn't seen, but Liz is in the chat room. So if you have questions about what's going on, if you want to say something or comment on the what the panelists are saying, that would be awesome. We love your feedback and we want this to be collaborative. Um, we are going to have kind of a formal panel for an hour. Formal. Uh, meaning <laughs> we'll, uh, we have a certain thing, uh, things that we want to get through. But after the break at an hour, we're going to bring in audience questions. So uh, think about what you want to talk to the audience or to the panel about. Um, a little bit about Peep Show. This is our fifth live event. So once a month now we're doing these live events where we are inviting people to um, watch panels on different topics. Last month we did um, self uh, sex work and self-care. Uh, we've done cosplay porn. We've done um, all kinds of stuff, DIY. Um, and today we are doing BBW porn and fat politics, which I am very excited about, and I know Courtney is excited about it too, and we have amazing panelists, so I think this is going to be great. Um, I also want to tell you all that these panelists are volunteering today to bring you their wisdom and their experience and their beauty. So if you feel inspired, and you should, uh, you can um, tip us on Cash App or um, Venmo or even on the PayPal in anywhere actually um, at Peep Show Media and we will split up anything that you tip between the panelists. So um, let's see, is there anything else? Yes, Peep Show Media also has a online magazine now and we've been running that. We particularly want to focus on um, sex work writers in the written pieces. So if you are in the audience and you're a sex worker and you have something you wanna say, um, please pitch us your stories. We love to share the stories of sex workers. We also really want to pay sex workers for their writing and their stories and their contributions. And we have a writer's fund for that. So um, audience members can also contribute to the writer's fund if they want to see more sex work writing. Um, so there are a lot of different ways in which you can support the work that we're doing. Um, and so many different ways. <laughs> so many ways. Actually, this isn't my job. I am bad at it. This is Courtney's job. Courtney what? is a media and marketing person. So uh, Courtney, I'm going to pass it over to you. That was amazing. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I'm struck by how we met and where we are because mm -hmm. how we met was on a the BBW. Oh no, it was, it was a plus size porn star panel at yes. AVN during the convention part. Um, and y'all came and I immediately connected with PJ over our, our mutual fondness for riot girl, The funniest which is like a feminist movement from the nineties and you don't know about it. <laughs> the funniest part it, of this story I want to say connected on it is that five minutes before we walked into the panel, PJ was like telling me all about Riot Girl, And I know nothing about this because I'm, I'm not a punk person. I'm a hip hop person. So he's telling me all about it. And then we walk in and Courtney starts giving a talk on Riot Girl, And he was like, see, this is so important. And I was like, wow, that was weird. <laughs> well, if I remember correctly, one of the main things I was talking about is that like feminism comes in a lot of different flavors and styles and that like feminism is alive and well in, in porn and especially like in, especially where it interjects with like our bodies and size and how people police us and accept, you know, accept us in various ways. So, you know, we've always had this ongoing conversation about desirability and politics and, um, you know, the panelists we have today um, are just so great. And I think that they have a lot to say about these topics too, because all, all three of you are actively working um, and navigating the, well, not working like right now, cause like pandemic, whatever, not super active, <laughs> but 
Um, you know, you've all been in this industry either from, I think we have an, an, a young in here, like uh, Shy Spells, you've been in the industry since 2017. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm going to introduce you first because you're the youngest. The, uh, the youngest. But maybe you were also the youngest. I'm not sure. Um, and Gabriel Flores, who's been in this business like since 1999 or something. <laughs> when did you start? 2005. 2005. <laughs> I started doing sex work uh, as a fat teen in 1999. <laughs> so speaking for myself, I've been around, um, yeah, basically since the nineties and I've been fat ever since I was a teenager. And it's, it's how I entered porn was as a fat person who wanted to do porn. Um, it, it was less of, um, you know, being a porn person and gaining weight, it was a more of a person of like wanting to enter the industry, like as a fat person and not be policed or silenced or that in any type of way. And, and the first person I applied to was Suicide Girls. And they told me flat out that I needed to suck in my tummy if I even wanted a chance. Um, and I was just so stubborn. I was stubborn. And I was just like, fuck that. I'm just going to start my own porn site. I'll just figure it out. So that's a little bit about my history is like in the early 2000s, I started my own porn site and it was fat positive. Now it's 2021 and I, I've made like a lot of films, some with April Flores, my dear friend. Um, and I hope we can talk about like collaboration a little bit during this, during this panel, because that is a very important part of how we get by in the industry. But for now, um, what I'd like to do is switch from introducing myself and talking about me and introduce the lovely panelists um, because I really want to hear more from them. Um, so first I want to introduce Shy Spells. Hi. Shy Spells. Hi. I'm going to read you a little bio and then I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put you on the spot. So Shy Spells is a BBW content creator who's been in the industry since 2017. Known for her sweet personality and colorful appearance, you can find her on many vids, OnlyFans, and Streamate. When she isn't interacting with fans and making content, you can find her binging historical fiction dramas and making delicious floral jelly. Mm -hmm. So you're a crafter. Uh, yes, I try to be. <laughs> Uh, is there anything good. else She's, you want to she sent me tell some. us about yourself? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to, I will purchase some. Yeah. Uh, I have to make really? some. I'm, I'm really bad at that. <laughs> um, so, is there uh, anything else you want to tell us about yourself tonight before we get started? Um, well, uh, I'm very honored to be here. Um, uh, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> we all um, uh, Yeah, so I started in 2017 and uh, this has been the most unexpected thing I would have never thought, you know, if you had told me even a month before I started, if you had told me that this was where I would be almost four years later, I, I would have, you know, I'd be like, not me. Um, so this has definitely been the most uh, uh, exciting experience uh, in my life. So. <laughs> Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to bringing up today? Um, uh, I guess I, uh, I look forward to, I guess, talking about like my, my personal ex experiences and how um, I see a lot. I feel a lot of people have like a lot of stigmas around um, being fat in the industry. So I would like to, you know, debunk some of those. Awesome. If we if we don't get around to that, make sure to remind us. <laughs> All right. Our next panelist is April Flores. I wrote this bio. Let's see if it's readable. April Flores is a plus size model and performer with a cult-like following, having appeared in hundreds of films, books, and magazines in her bright career. I should change that to illustrious. <laughs> An award-winning porn star, Flores has appeared in countless adult films in every genre of the adult industry and was the first BBW to win two consecutive AVN awards for her groundbreaking work. Wow. She's also the model behind the first ever fat pussy cyber skin sleeve. April Flores is also a writer and advocate for a positive body image. She's published in multiple anthologies and journals, speaking on her experience as a plus size artist, activist, and sex worker. You can catch her book, Fat Girl, April Flores, by Carlos Batts, anywhere where books are sold. April, did I miss anything? And what are you looking forward to talking about? Well, you, um, I am a Taurus. And 
<laughs> but no, I think you got you got all of it. That's why I was like, I need a new bio. Please help me. You should mention that you're a Taurus because that seems crucial. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'm excited about for tonight is just talking, keeping this conversation going. I think that is very important. Just the fact that we're talking, that we're gathering, that you're recording it, it'll be seen. Um, beyond just this hour and a half or, or two hours that we will be here and live on. So for me, the important part is being part of the discussion. So thank you for having me. And yeah, let's let's talk. Yeah, I'm most excited about to like, not just, not really he- hear so much about like your whole past, but like where you're at right now, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm really excited to like how you're feeling about like porn and be and like fatness and like just the current time that we're in and like where we want to be and like what it's like for you now maybe versus what it used to be like but yeah we we can we can reminisce (laughs) (laughs) all right so our third panelist is the lovely destiny diaz she is a busty canadian brunette you should not ask her what her boob size is i learned that last night at the (laughs) x-biz awards when joanna angel tried to get it out of her She's beyond sizing. She has collected 12 awards in her time spent in the industry, and she's been featured in publications such as Forbes and Vice. What else would you like to add to that tonight? And what are you excited to talk about? Um, Tonight, I'm really excited to talk about um, breaking the limitations of being a BBW and only being classified as a BBW and having you know, wanting to break out of those stigmas and the way the rest of the society and the rest of our industry even views us. Um, and just talking about the value of plus size people in the industry, because I think we're really underrated, <laughs> like really, really. Mm-hmm. I definitely hope we get to talk about um, busting some of the myths that we're actually not popular because we're super popular. Most <laughs> top trending on like every website top trending on every website. Let me throw out everybody's socials real quick and then I'll throw it back to Jesse. Um, so April Flores is on OnlyFans at, a- at the April Flores, Instagram, Twitter, Cash App, and Venmo, all at the April Flores. Destiny Diaz is on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat at, at ddestiny underscore Diaz. We're going to put that in the chat room. Make sure you check the chat room. Shy Spells is twitter.com slash shy spells and onlyfans.com slash shy spells onlyfans is awesome if you want to talk to us more after this or you want to talk to us in more sexual ways after this (laughs) save it for later hit us up on onlyfans we're happy to go there with you (laughs) um but today we were also going to take questions from the audience about fat politics and bbw porn so if you have them send them to liz and we'll get to bring them up later um what's next jesse um let me see i uh shoot i just went off of the i was trying (laughs) to make i was trying to make sure that nobody on like twitter was trying to get in so right that's super important yeah Um, yeah so i'm really excited (laughs) to be here like courtney said courtney and i met at uh at avn at a um plus size politics panel that was really amazing because when was that like 2017 or something (laughs) must have been like three years ago and um I have to say that um I didn't I didn't know this was going to happen when I got into the industry I didn't really think about this very much but right when I started working um I uh realized that um that my clients and my fans um from the very start started classifying my body as like BBW in ways that I didn't anticipate or expect um and uh, I started to wonder, like, what what does it even mean to be a BBW? Who gets constituted as a BBW? And um, that was like very, very early in my career as a sex worker, but also very early in my career as a writer. And so some of my like very early um, articles and things that I wrote about was actually a Vice article that I interviewed both Courtney and Shy Spells for like years ago about what it means to be a BBW, how performers take that up. Um, uh, whether we're like um, taking it on ourselves or whether it's being assigned to us from outside of ourselves, because in my experience, um, it's been assigned to me from outside of myself, which doesn't mean that I don't embrace it. It just means that like, that's not what I set out to 
to do. I didn't know that I was going to set out to represent um, fat bodies. And it turns out that that's been something that's like come up throughout my whole career and in ways that also I didn't necessarily, um, even when I'm not talking about fatness, which is a lot of the time, I'm not talking about fatness a lot of the time, but even when I, even when I write articles, I'll have people write to me, um, women, right. I'll have men write to me and talk to me about how they really like and appreciate my body, but I'll also have women write to me and say, Oh, I read what you said about X, Y, or Z. And I loved seeing like a fat woman saying those things. And I would have to go back and look and I'm like, am I actually talking about fatness? And most of the time I wasn't, but you know, my work gets read through the lens of fatness. So that's been a really interesting experience for me. And one that's like made me reflect on my body in a lot of ways that I didn't know I was going to do when I entered into this industry. So, um, and that's been like both positive and negative. It's been positive in the sense that it's like very much helped me to embrace my body. And it's been negative in the sense that I've been very badly trolled for being fat. <laughs> um, and uh, especially when I do more like mainstream publicity and things like that. So we can talk a little bit about that. I'd be interested in talking about like the positive things and the, the negative things, because I think it's a very like kind of intense experience. Um, okay, so I that, that being said, I wanna open it up to the panelists. It's kind of where I'm coming from. And the first question that I wanted to ask, especially since I just talked about the fact that it wasn't something that was like, um, that I really chose. Um, I wanna ask you like, if you all identify with that term or how you feel about it, or if it's something um, like what your relationship to it is and how you would define it. So um, let's start with Destiny, what do you think? Sure, my experience was really similar to yours. Um, you talked to me earlier about um, like what I would, how I would identify the term BBW and, and what is a BBW? How do you, how do you define that? Right. So mm -hmm. when I joined the industry, I was about a size 12 to a 14 and mm -hmm. I was being labeled as a BBW immediately. And I didn't really think that I fit in that category and not that I had an issue with it. I just didn't think that my body type was larger at that time, mm -hmm. but instantly, as soon as I got in the industry, it was exactly that. It was assigned to me. Um, and I think that that was really helpful, but at the same time, I was getting a lot of, uh, like once I started using that term, I started getting a lot of heat from other performers or other people who were finding me in that tag. And they were like, you're not BBW. So I just, for a long time, I think I didn't know how to identify with it. Cause I didn't know exactly if I fit in that category or not. Um, until I hit like size 22 and now nobody says anything about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think that, um, that I anticipated or, or set out to advocate or ab like be an advocate for uh, plus size bodies. Um, but as I've been in the industry, I've just, I've grown <laughs> like in multiple ways. And so I, I've just experienced kind of like two different sides of sex work. You know what I mean? Like I started off smaller and now I'm experiencing things differently, but I don't actually, um, feel like my experience has changed drastically and maybe that's just my personal experience but I don't really get a lot of trolls people talking about my body type anymore mm -hmm. um it was more so like really on campsites when I first started um like early streaming days but mm -hmm. yeah over time I just kind of embraced it and I think that no one really questions it anymore but for a long time people did and it was really like weird to identify with and I didn't want to like offend anybody by saying I was when I wasn't so yeah, it's been really confusing. <laughs> yeah, what about you, Shai? Um, so I the first time I ever heard the term BBW was from watching porn when I was younger. And um, I was talking to a friend who was also large. And I said, I was really ecstatic when I saw it. I was like, oh, there's a term for my body type. Mm -hmm. And she told me, no, you're not a BBW. I was I weigh, I weigh 90 pounds less than I do now. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, you're not a BBW. BBW, they're like larger, larger women. And so I was like, um, I was like, oh, okay. And, um, but now when I, when I, when I started camping and stuff and you, you add the tags or you describe yourself, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a big woman and beauty is subjective, but you know, for all intents and purposes, I'm a big, beautiful woman. So, um, However, I, and I get this quite a bit, I get told a lot, and it's typically from men, 
um, that I'm not a BBW, that I'm just fat. <laughs> so um, I, a lot of times when people do ask me, if they haven't like seen my body and they ask like, oh, what do you look like? I won't say I'm a BBW. I'll just say I'm fat. And if they say, oh, well, how fat? I'll say I'm very fat. If they then assign me and say, oh, no, you're a BBW, then I'll, you know, I'll continue to use it. And for like my OnlyFans and stuff, I say BBW. But in general, though, I, um, I mean, I, I feel if technically I'm a BBW, but I feel that a lot of um, BBWs now that I see are more, they're smaller or they have like um, certain proportions that I don't have. Mm -hmm. And so when people see my body, they're like, no, you're, you're like, you're not a BBW. You're just fat. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I was trying to say. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, April, what's your experience with that been? Um, so I entered in 2005 and it was a much different time back then. And I didn't, well, yeah, when I entered it, it was BBW. I, I'm, 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 I was a BBW. For me, I see it as a descriptive uh, term because porn ultimately is a product. And as much as I hate labels, I hate labels. <laughs> but as much as I do, there is still a way that the industry needs to like market shit or categorize it. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand how problematic it can be for some people, BBW, in that it can um, label like, or, or really like mark fetishization. Mm-hmm. And for me, I just like fat. I th- just call me fat. I like fat. That doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Even if you're trying to hurt my feelings, like it doesn't. Um, so for me, I, I like fat. That's how I self-identify. But specifically with the term BBW, it's an old term. It's from the 70s. Like it's antiquated for sure. Just like a lot of stuff in porn is antiquated. Just like a lot of stuff in, you know, a lot of stuff is just antiquated. So I'm, I'm, that's another reason I'm glad we're here and having this conversation because I would be happy to adopt a term that is, you know, feels better for us fat people. Fat for me, I like, I know some people use plus size. I don't like that term to describe what I do. I like that term, like that term for me describes what I wear. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, it, it's a really complex and really like, um, charged three letters um and i have faith that it will change to be a word that we all love and it starts right here like us talking Mm -hmm. yeah um courtney we're moving to you (laughs) (laughs) um well i have a question i have to put on my glasses every single time i want to actually look at the screen so excuse me I'm getting old. <laughs> um, for me, BBW works um, as a marketing term. Like when I signed up for many vids, like I started using BBW. Like I think that was like the turning point for me um, from going from like really being just like against it because my my like niche in porn was not set up in a way in which I needed to, to really market to men, I guess. So when I sort of opened up to more male customers and doing less queer porn and more straight or heteronormative types of scenes for many beds or movies or something, I did start switching and tagging myself as BBW because this is a job and that is like, that is the, the market. But I mean, that it's a, it's not just about my fatness. It's also about gender too, because I don't, I do not identify as a woman. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm also five feet tall. So big and woman don't really line up for me, you know? (laughs) So like fat, yes, I I love the word fat. And also for me, and this kind of ties into a question that I have for everyone, because I came from a pretty political background. Like the first thing I did, um, you know, when I, I, I called it my fat girl breakdown, when I decided to stop hating myself, start loving my body. And I started writing about it. I made a zine and a website and started putting these little pictures, uh, like flyers and cosmopolitan magazine in the grocery stores. That was like, you know, stop 
hating your body because I wanted people in the magazines to like get this idea right um so I did do like a little bit of political activism before um you know the allure of, of sex work uh and porn really became like my main focus of activism I'm curious um and for me so for me the word fat is so perfect for that because fat politics fat positivity um Marilyn Wan's Fat So is a really good book from the 90s that I read that was like really informative for me for sort of breaking down all the stereotypes um and starting to understand what fat phobia was and how it how it played into like my class issues and like the different races in my family and like all these things, my gender, you know, I can't really trans, people don't necessarily recognize me as a trans person because I look like a woman. Like I have big titties. What can I do? You know? So I'm curious, you know, if you're like, how politically involved are you? Um, and like, do you do things around fat positivity, um, or body positivity or awareness or whatever you want to call it, um, in outside of your work? And how do they interchange with each other? And if anybody wants to pipe up first. Yes, I'll go. Destiny. I'll go. Yay, yeah. thank you. Um, almost all the women in my family are plus size. So I grew up with women who were very confident with their bodies. Um, my mom, like, she just always owned it. And so she was very, very comfortable. She called herself fat. The word fat was very normalized in my life, in my vocabulary. It wasn't used in a negative way towards anyone in my family. Um, but there was always like, um, like, you know, that underhanded type of everybody kind of saying, you know, oh, well, you know, you got to keep it down, blah, 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 like, just to be very conscious of your body, because you know, our genetics and, and I think it turned in for a little while of us maybe shaming each other subconsciously. Um, like when one of my younger cousins wore like a, a crop top, you know, my mom said something along the lines of, oh, like, you know, cover up your body. And then my cousin said to her, you know, why? Like, and it kind of threw my mom off for a sec because she's like, she didn't really notice that she was playing both sides of it. So I think my role in my personal life has been normalizing that with my family and letting everyone like feel sexy in whatever clothes that they're wearing. Um, you know, just making sure everyone feels seen and confident. And we do things together um, uh, that are like, <laughs> like that get our bodies kind of moving but to a point where everyone's still comfortable. So like we all just kind of work collectively to keep ourselves healthy, but we're not in a, in a way like um, shaming each other for it anymore. It's more of a let's be healthy, not a let's be skinny, you know? So I think, and that might come from our, like the generation before them, our grandparents. Yeah. Um, I think that's where most of that comes from. Yeah, that's nice. in my personal life. It's more, it's more like my immediate family because I, I'm just always around fat women, you know. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Sorry, I'm. Oh, I can't meet this person, but you can, Jesse. Oh, okay. Um, uh, guests, just go ahead and mute yourself if you are unmuted. Um, um try. How do you feel about does fat politics in, invade your everyday life? Um, I'm saying this knowing this, that we all work every day all the time and that so, is, can't um, separate it. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, I'm black and I recently found out that fat <laughs> is actually very rooted in racism. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I feel it's um, that I feel like I have a, a huge inter intersection there where being black and fat. So my entire life, I was told that you know, that my blackness and my fatness was something I needed to hide. And um, if, even my mom, she's been very, uh, I guess like uh, shocked, I should say, how I'm trying to normalize uh, saying that I like, I call myself fat. Um, I have people use it as descriptor words for me. Um, I also, I, I check people um, in, in public when I see them like body shaming and such. Like, for example, I was talking to a woman and she had a daughter and her daughter was on a sports team, like doing very well, like got a scholarship. And um, the, the girl said, oh, uh, I'm sweating so bad. And she said, um, oh, that's good to lose some weight. And I like stopped her like right in front of her. And I said, I was like, no, 
I was like, she's she's fine the way she is. Like I was like, your daughter's an athlete, and you're like, you're concerned as how 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 big she is. So um, I guess like I just I try to be um, aware and uh, I'm sorry, very bad words. Um, <laughs> I'm more aware of and trying to normalize fatness. Or uh, number one thing, I, I hate this. I hate when I call myself fat and someone says, "No, you're beautiful." Mm-hmm. I can be fat and beautiful like it's i'm not it's not a negative word i I, i've had like full-on arguments with people telling me like when they're trying to correct me don't call yourself fat it's not negative i'm not i'm not dunking on myself Mm -hmm. i'm just a fat person and i deserve to exist and be content and happy with myself as a fat person Mm -hmm. so i feel um you know i feel like it's a big political statement for me to just exist and be online I said I used to never like go online and, and be like you know talking to people something like this where I know it's going to be on YouTube that, that would have never happened a few years ago I'd have been like I, I can't be on no can't be on the panel um so I I I, I love like just existing and 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 being me and, and you know and I definitely get insecure and I definitely get trolls but I I feel like it's been very empowering to be like yep I'm I'm fat and I'm black and I'm here so <laughs> yeah I think there's something about like be working in like porn too like in particular because not only are you saying like I'm here and I'm fat and I'm black but you're also saying like I am sexy <laughs> like yes you know and, and I'm naked and I'm not afraid to show you that I'm vulnerable right like, that to me feels like the most powerful statement sometimes is I'm also I'm all of this and I'm also naked and vulnerable and squirting all over the camera. So what? So what? <laughs> Be mad. Yeah. yeah. And and people get <laughs> very mad just just for Yes. They it's 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 but that's I feel like and I don't I, I hope one day I get over it, but that is the most actually right before I came on here, someone called me a, a fat bitch. Um because uh they kept it was they their first message to me, they kept asking where I where I live and I thought that was very creepy. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Yeah, I'm not telling you where I live and they're like, Whatever, you fat bitch and I'm like, Okay, well I think that that I think it's interesting that you bring that up because I feel like that happens a lot where um uh, where especially like time wasters will be trying to get something from you and are obviously like very attracted to you. But then when you're like, no, I'm not going to give you my content or my time for free, then they're like, yeah, but you're just fat and nobody wants, you know, you anyway. And that's, that's this very weird mind game that they like to play. Yeah. I, f- I feel that's the number one thing that I hope I get over soon is not being, um, cause sometimes I'll like miss out on money because I'll be talking to someone and I'll be like, Oh, I love your body. I, I would love to see more of you. That'd be the perfect time for you to be like, Oh, I have an only fans, mm-hmm. but I see the hate I've gotten from it. And I really shouldn't care, but it's, you know, it, it does stick with me sometimes, especially when I first started, like, you know, so I, I hope that's something that I learned to like, not care about. Yeah. Maybe April can speak to that. We're still on the topic of politics, but. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so in terms of politics. We politi- can talk about whatever we want. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in terms of politics, I want to echo what Shai said. Just, I feel like just being fat and not, you know, like embodying the the stereotype, which I've never found to be true. Like, I, I've never really found fat people to be like these sad, you know, small, you know, like made to be small people. But I, yeah, I just think that us being out there vulnerable, like Courtney said, fucking putting ourselves all the way out there for anyone to see. When I got started, my ma- main motivation was to be, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, the opposite of what the norms are considered to be, especially back in 2005, to be desirable and 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 beautiful. Um, so yeah, just being being like as happy as happy. Happy is such a weird term. I used to always like use it, but I've changed. So, but just being like existing and and fucking and monetizing and. Uh, being the visual representation of what some people are truly, truly scared to become. I grew up in a household where all my family is fat women and they're all really terrified of remaining fat. So 
I, I, I think it's so cool that Destiny had the experience of, you know, having the word not demonized and being fat wasn't this horrible thing. Still to this day, like my mom says some stuff which doesn't really like sit well with me. But I, I choose my battles and I deal with that with my therapist. But um, yeah, I, I think that sl- change is slow, but I think that it is um, happening. Mm-hmm. Hot tip, have a fat positive therapist. <laughs> That's positive too. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like a keeper. Yeah, I love her. <laughs> Send me that name. <laughs> I feel like there's a um a movement that's happening to happening to have more representation. And I think that that's like really important and not just in porn, but in like fashion and in um, popular mm. culture. What I'm finding though, is that there's like a lag uh, with how people are talking about it because um, you know, f- speaking of like older family members, somebody the other day was talking about this about, well, now I look in a magazine and there's people of like all sizes or different things going on. And then the way that she described it was, you know, you have the really like beautiful people and then like the regular people. And I'm like, actually those people are beautiful too. But, you know, and I think that there's still a way in which people are like conceptualizing, oh, it's great to have more representation, but then still pulling apart the people who aren't like fitting the norm including like all of us on this panel and um and like Courtney said earlier I think the thing that's like really interesting about that is um there's also a and I always find this at AVN or anytime we go to any conventions there's a huge uh lag between what customers and clients like actually like and what the industry assumes that they like (laughs) um because you see on every pillar like um very conventional models but you have all kinds of people who are there who don't fit that norm um we wanted to move on to individual questions about your own oh lord bison you're gonna have to turn your camera lord off. bison <laughs> you, no. turn, you can actually turn his camera off for him yeah let me uh... unless he has some thoughts <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, everybody who is not on the panel needs to be muted, but you can talk in the chat. Um, Okay, so I want to ask you guys individual questions, but first I just want to make sure that nobody has anything that they want to pick up on um, from the earlier conversation before we move on. I really kind of want to talk about like busting down stereotypes a little bit more Mm -hmm. because Shai picked that up at the beginning. We don't really have that in our our future planned questions. Mm -hmm. So... um, yeah, like, I would really love to hear about, like, what kind of, you know, stereotypes you would like to see busted. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, for one, would love to see, I mean, I guess this is a stereotype that we worked really hard to bust, April, and I and a few other folks, is to do lesbian plus size or BBW porn, is to actually do girl, girl, because the biggest myth, and this is for the business people and the, and in the audience is that BBW girl, girl doesn't sell. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's the myth that I would like to bust tonight um, is that I think that fat girls fucking is very lucrative Mm -hmm. and I have the money to back it up. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I've spent it all, but (laughs) I know that lesbian BBW sells. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's the myth that I want to bust today also that I'm not always confident and I don't do porn because I'm confident like I do porn because I need money that part (laughs) I'm not always that I'm not always like I love myself yeah I I, um I I wanted to add that I feel like um when I join I feel like people kind of strip me of um the complexity of being a human uh because they figure oh you're fat and you're putting yourself out there so you have to be super confident and whenever I show like a moment where I'm not having a good day or I'm not feeling great about myself or you know like any other person then suddenly it's all like you know, people want to get in my inbox and be, oh, white night. I call it white nighting. They'll be in my inbox like, oh, hey, baby girl, you're beautiful. And I love fat girls. And if you were here with me, I'd make you feel so good. And so, and it's like, well, I, I, I didn't ask you all that. I'm just having an off day. I don't care how you feel about my body. Honestly, I'm going to eat some ice cream and feel better. Like, I don't know. Like they feel like they need like 
I don't, I feel like a lot of um, men think that we need their validation. And so they'll, they'll, you know, I, I get that a lot. So whenever I have a moment where I'm not feeling great, like, you know, here they come like, oh, let me validate you and stuff. And validation is, is great. You know, I definitely want validation, but I, I hate feeling like I have to be a hundred percent in total in love see my reflection get horny feeling because I don't always feel that way mm-hmm. so that was it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um what other sort of um myths would you all like to see broken hmm. well I really want to see more plus size bw fat women on magazine covers mm-hmm. in promotional ads um ambassadorships all of it I want to see them uh, hosting an award show like I everything everywhere you know the big AVN posters for like the big celebration there's like a ton of all these like mainstream I want to see fat models in there I want to see men in there I want to see fat men in there like I want to see everybody like I want I want to see a better representation of everybody in our community on on publications um I feel like the easiest place to start it's usually fat people because we just find a way to squeeze ourselves in there. Keep show media is a good place to start. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we put everyone's pictures. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I um, I want to go back to what Courtney was saying because I, um, you know, I had a friend that I used to do a lot of filming with, who's a BBW woman, and our. Um, I have people who've bought a lot of my clips who've often told me that the ones that I did with her were their favorites, you know? And so I think that, um, uh, that stuff didn't sell less than the, um, and actually probably sold more than the, um, clips that I've made with thinner women. And so, um, that's definitely not true. Um, and going back to what shy spell says, I also, um, have found that. And I've also, um, here's a here's a myth that like I actually really want to break um the myth that like I went into the sex industry with that has totally changed uh my mind is that um men are more attracted to thin women than they are to heavy women that is not true at all and the myth that I would like to break um comes actually more from our like clients and customers um I think that what, what I see a lot is people coming to me saying, um, I'm actually really much more attracted to people with bodies like yours, but, but um, I don't want people to know that, or, but I can't really accept that, or I'm here because I'm really attracted to your body and I don't get to express that. And I've been thinking so much about why in our culture, we're not allowed to, first of all, be who we are, which is like kind of what we've been talking about and to like what we like. (laughs) And so I would love to see like movement there um, with people not feeling like it's shameful to like our bodies. I think on social media, sometimes I see people say that they like fat girls, you know? And so they're like, oh, get me a big plus size honey, blah, 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 blah. And then I've never seen you date a fat woman. I've right. never seen you post a picture with a fat fat woman. Or don't just say it because it's trendy. Like if you genuinely do like date them, represent them. Like I saw this really sweet TikTok one time and this guy's like, show me that you date fat girls without telling me you date fat girls. And he had like the seatbelt extenders and like he had um, like just more comfortable, secure chairs to sit in, handles to get into the pool. It was just like very thoughtful. And I was like, yes, like I could tell that you date a fat girl. Like I, thank you. And uh, I just think that people are so afraid because well, when we were growing up in school, I think that was like the main time where everyone was like, oh my God, this is your flaw. This is your flaw. That's your flaw. And a lot of us still hold a lot of that as adults. And so it's hard for us to break out of those later on I think it takes a lot of like self-reflection and time to get comfortable and confident for anybody in anything that they were picked at for as a kid growing up I don't know a girl who hasn't been called fat I don't think or like yeah or a girl who hasn't been body shamed in another way like you're so skinny blah 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 blah. like Mm -hmm. it's just always about our bodies so Mm -hmm. yeah that is definitely the biggest part of the work is actually 
for me was realizing that um, like fat hatred affects people at all sizes Mm -hmm. from the biggest to the littlest. We're all affected by a fat phobic world. Mm -hmm. There's not one of us that doesn't feel, feel somehow unworthy at one point in our lives because, you know, mass corporate white media was mostly run by men want us to feel crappy. So Mm -hmm. that's the reality of it. And I, I think a lot of times people, you know, I kind of, um, I don't know, that was it right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it fuels business, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> hatred fuels, uh, the beauty business mm-hmm. and the industry mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. So making people hate, they hate, people. they hate themselves too. Like, yeah, it just, for instance, um, I just spent some money at Savage X Fenty because they put out a boy's capsule a men's capsule mm-hmm. on Savage X Fenty that goes all the way up to three X. So I was like able to get like some, some smoking, a smoking jacket and some boxers in my size. And I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had a fat man modeling the boxers. And I was like, that is what my tummy is going to look like in those boxers. I am stoked to know that this website represents all types of bodies and lo and behold the business is run not by a white man but by a black woman and that is going to happen constantly over and over again when we look at the products that represent us or are catered to us it's always going to be sort of a dichotomy between like these white men who are trying to make money off of our problems and like the rest of us who are trying to fix them yeah Um, i know where my money's going Um, let's do another, um, question for all of you. And the one that I want to move to is I want to ask you all, like what working in the industry specifically has taught you like about, um, desire. I mean, we're, we're kind of in the, in the business of fantasy (laughs) and the production of like desire. So I'm curious, like what you have learned about it through working in it. Does that question make sense? Yeah, I'll go. Yeah. Uh So I entered the industry as a heterosexual woman (laughs) and really quickly saw that I had opportunity. Well, my first shoot was with a woman. Mm -hmm. So, and that was my first lesbian experience, lesbian experience. Um, So yeah, I had always been curious about um, my fluid nature, but I never felt confident enough or just really that it was something that um, was really like me, even though I had the desire. So in, in porn, I got to be with partners that were not cis men. <laughs> and yeah, so my, my sexuality was really, I've been able to um, just have fun with all different people. Um, yeah. What about you, Shai? Um, well, so not only did I enter the industry heterosexual, I also entered monogamous Mm -hmm. uh, with my husband. And I used to think the idea of being open or being polyamorous was so taboo to me. I, I, I honestly thought like, how, how, how could you be in love with someone and want to have sex with somebody else? Like I couldn't fathom that. Mm -hmm. And now here we are four years later and my husband and I have opened our marriage Mm -hmm. and, um, I can understand the, uh, the, I guess the complexity of desiring other people and still being deeply in love with your partner and that not affecting that and, and seeing, sex is like this just expressive thing Mm -hmm. and thing and things to explore um without um i guess like feeling shame Mm -hmm. or um i don't know how to describe it i guess Mm -hmm. uh it's just i i you know i always thought that um you know i was like i could i could never um be with another woman i could never sleep with somebody else Mm -hmm. and uh just how my ideas of sex have changed a lot of shame has come up I think a lot of it was growing up and feeling a lot of shame um so because I always equate it to if, if you're if, 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 and somebody mentioned talking about um like feeling worthy um as a fat person and I always felt that if uh, if I had a partner and they wanted to be sleep with someone else that that mean that they didn't find me worthy mm-hmm. and so I, I no longer feel that way and um so 
Uh, and then also just in general, uh, just being desired in general and people, you know, paying money to talk to me and, mm -hmm. and wanting to treat me to things. Um, you know, I, I spent a, a big portion of my life being told that I was, I was the furthest from the status quo of beauty. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to, uh, so when I was in high school, I was the only black girl in my graduating class. Mm -hmm. Um, there was only one other black student. We, I was I was one of two black students in my graduating class and I was the only black woman and people would just outright tell me that I wasn't pretty because or I wasn't dateable or I would not get invited to things I you know had friends who would purposely like to bring up how they were you know like prettier than me and stuff so I, I really thought that there was no place for me in in, in sex work um, so to see that there is a place for me and, you know, and I just have to work hard enough for it. That just, you know, it's, it's a, it's a very comforting thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that that's, that's really lovely. I think that's what I feel like that that's happened to me um, being in the sex industry too. Not exactly like that because I already had an open relationship when I came in and I was already sleeping with women, but I do think that um, there uh, there's a way in which things that seemed unimaginable, like stopped seeming unimaginable <laughs> and where like your horizons are opened in ways that, um, that I really, um, that I really value. And sometimes when I talk to people who, you know, haven't had these sorts of experiences, it, it's kind of sad to me to think about how like limiting most people's like lives are and how limiting their sexual horizons are and even just their imagination of like what's possible so I like that you brought that brought that up uh Destiny what about you I'm gonna piggyback off Shy because she's brought up some really really great things that I can relate to mm -hmm. um like connecting sex and love like that was really difficult for me and I think it was just the way I was brought up like uh, I wouldn't say that my mom ever uh, like slut shamed but she was always teaching us sexual education. So it was always like, you know, you could get pregnant, you could get SEIs, da, 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 da. So I stayed like a uh, virgin until I was like 17 or 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I had a, just a really difficult time separating those two types of relationships. Like I didn't want to give any part of me or any exchange of me with somebody who I didn't think it was going to be worth it or or anything like that. And so when I, when I met my partner, I was like, we were both talking about swinging. It was interesting to me. It was hot. It was cool. And we tried it and off the get, I hated it. I was like, oh my God, like I'm so jealous. Da -da -da -da, I can't do this. Like it was like very, very hard for me. But I think that came from maybe past relationships of people being unfaithful and, and not treating me right. When like I look at our relationship now, like nine years later, we're like, I, I know this dude is not going anywhere. <laughs> like I'm like, yeah, if you want to get your dick sucked, like I'm good now. Like we've had an open relationship for a few years now and yeah it took I think I think sex work really opened me up to that and uh just wanting to work with some of my friends and and meeting people in the industry I was just like a lot more open to inviting these people into uh intimate time with me um and another thing um Shai had said was when she wasn't feeling worthy but like or, or that gifts and being spoiled and being like really treated well in the industry by our customers, by our fans, made you feel like you had a little bit more self-worth or just more worthy of these of these gifts. Like nothing was ever handed to me growing up. Like I couldn't even use the internet without having to work for it. So to get things just as gifts to people, I think that really helped me like accept gifts. I feel like I feel like I've always had a huge issue with that. Like I wouldn't touch something that I got as a gift because I'd have to earn the right to play with that thing or and it's something I've just been working on myself, but you, you explained it so well and I just want to bring it up again. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that like camming and the industry and everything around that has really helped me like accept myself in many different aspects. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a really good point. Um, April will be right back. She's just on pause and so she'll be right back. Okay, that's fine. I was going to say that um, it's 930 and I don't know if, should we do our slideshow and then come yeah. back? Okay, so let's we, do the slideshow. We made a slideshow. I made a slideshow for you all. Um, 
of pictures of our beautiful panelists and and Courtney and I. Um, so because <laughs> we're also plus porn performers <laughs> of the BBW variety. Yeah, of so, the fat variety. Um, hold on a second. Let me see. Shoot, this didn't work. That looks nice. No, it's needs. To, now, are you seeing the slideshow? No, now I'm seeing your background. Okay, PJ, can you help me? <laughs> Stop share. Okay. And then go to screen share. Okay. And then pick the actual this slideshow. One. Okay. Yeah. Now can you see it? Is this yes. the right thing? Okay. And then go into presenter mode here. <clears throat> okay. There you go. All right. I need a my like assistant here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm just going to run through the body, yaddy, 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 I should have had like music. Body crazy, curvy, big, big titties, at least. Body, yaddy, yaddy. I can't I keep that up for this. as long as this is. But I love Red. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's cute. With the, um... <laughs> it's cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that one. Mm hmm. I like all of your backdrops that you hang. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ooh, la, yes. <laughs> yes. That's a cool cover. Oh, that's a cover. Courtney. Ooh. <laughs> you have great colored lights. Fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Ooh, la, la. <laughs> oh, okay. How okay, fun. <laughs> <laughs> Moderator's got it too. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Moderator's got it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We are back now. Um, yeah. On myself because now I'm a little embarrassed. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, do we want to, Liz, let me go to you really quick. Do we have questions from the audience that we want to talk about? And, or do we want to go back to the conversation we were having? I vaguely remember Estella Bathory wants us to know what our rising signs are. Yes, there was a question about. <laughs> <laughs> I have well, no idea. Aquarius rising. Oh dear. I just found okay. that out like three weeks ago. <laughs> Aquarius rising. Wait, what's your sun sign? Uh, I'm a Virgo Aquarius, like a Virgo sun, Aquarius moon, Aquarius rising. I am a Virgo with a Scorpio rising and a Leo moon. I'm a Pisces and I don't remember the rest. My son keeps track of this for me and has it in his notebook. So I would have to ask him, but he's not here. So I don't know. <laughs> Um, so I made a uh, Taurus sun, uh, Capricorn moon, and Scorpio rising. And I'm a, I'm a Taurus sun, Taurus, and Aries. And I don't know which which is which, but I am a double Taurus. <laughs> and I'm not stubborn at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Pressing questions different. people need to know. <laughs> was that everyone? Liz? Yeah, that was everyone. I don't remember. Okay, oh, Stella <laughs> wants us to know that they are Aquarius, Gemini, Gemini. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that means. means. I'm a Pisces <laughs> and PJ calls me a wet fish, and that's all I like. No. <laughs> a wet blanket. He calls me a wet blanket. <laughs> a wet blanket? <laughs> that means but he says it um okay what uh liz what else do you any other have? questions yes. and then we had um a really great question um miss lopez says i've definitely gone through my own body shame working within the industry i'm wondering how each of you practice self-love and self-care considering how debilitating the industry can be especially for fat sex workers mm. a really good question Does anybody um ask? i'll if you don't mind i'll go first mm -hmm. um 
So when I first started, um, I joined like a lot of uh, sex worker groups and I would mm-hmm. always go in there and complain about the awful things people said to me. And finally, someone commented on my post and was like, girl, you need to thicken your skin or you will not make it. <laughs> and I was I- like, and at first I was like really hurt, like so, so insensitive, but it's true. So um, uh, someone posted something some time ago and they said men will stick their dick in a chicken sandwich so <laughs> like don't take what they say to heart so sometimes when I'm, <laughs> I'm having a moment where people are being mean to me I think I think to myself okay so you insulted me you said I don't have a real job you said I'm fat you said I'm ugly what does that mean to me because I'm still going to be here I'm still posting my work I still have people who love me I still have a million things to be grateful for so you just caught me fat I know that's a reflection of them and I know that's a lot easier said than done because it does hurt and definitely there's been times where someone will say something to me and I have to go to my husband I'm like I somebody just said this to me and I don't really heard about it so I say the biggest thing to keep people who uplift you keep friends and people in your life who will always make you you know feel good about yourself and you know have that support system and then also realize like these people who come to our inboxes they know what we look like they know you know what we're here for they that mean they saw us and they were like wow i want to get me some of that you (laughs) rejected them and now they're upset about it so that's why i I, that's a big thing i keep in mind like you came to my page you added me you went into my inbox you asked to meet up with me or get my content now that i've said no to you because you're not meeting you're not working within my boundaries now all of a sudden i'm an ugly fat bitch i'm like no you exposed yourself goodbye (laughs) I I had to have like a friend point out to me and this kind of changed my whole perspective on this. So um, I, PJ and I had done this Vice documentary that got outside of the sex work bubble, um, but like very far outside of the sex work bubble there, that clip has like 3.5 million views. And the, um, because it got so far outside um, and because I don't match what they think of like as a porn star, there was like 1200 comments that were like so mean and to me it was like embarrassing too because now I have this thing out with people just talking about how fat I am and it was really um really mean too like they would say like one of them said that I look like I drink a jar of mayonnaise every morning and you know just like uh, lots and lots of stuff like that you know if I lost 100 pounds maybe I'd make money in this industry and I'm like what are you talking about it's my full-time job I do make money in this industry but like my friend pointed out um because it's really overwhelming to look at all of these messages. She's like, but this this has 3 million views and that's a thousand people. Like, why don't you do the math on this <laughs> and see like what percentage of people who've watched this, um, you know, think you're too fat to be on this thing. And when I was like, wait, it's like 0.001% of people who saw this um, mm-hmm. decided to harass me. I was like, you know what, actually this is such a small percentage of people like these trolls are just out to to do that and um I kind of let it let it go I mean I have to say that I'm a writer so another thing that I do is like write about these experiences and the other day I was go I didn't think I wrote about it a lot and the other day I was going through a project where I was categorizing categorizing all of my articles and I realized that I've written on like fat positivity more than I've written on like any other topic which was surprising to me because I didn't realize that I write about this that much, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I think like putting things into perspective, which is also one thing, something that Shai was talking about and realizing, you know, there's not, um, the loud people will try to tear you down, but they're not everybody. (laughs) Um, yeah, I don't know. What about the rest of you? For me, um, I, I want to like agree with what both of you have said. Uh, I don't read comments on articles or videos or anything. I'll read comments on my socials, but not anything else because they are really, you know, like we can get a hundred comments that are, yeah, like rah, rah, great. You're great. And then the one that says something that hurts, Mm -hmm. that's what I tend to fixate on. So a long time ago, I decided I'm not going to read comments anymore. I have a good community of 
friends around me who um, are able to lift me up when I'm having a hard time, Courtney included. <laughs> and um, also cannabis. Like I meditate myself, not, you know, like, you, you know, it's not something that's dependent on it, but, and I apologize. I had to step out because the delivery was here early. Um, but yeah, I just, I also, I like take walks and, um, I see a dog, you know, like just normal stuff, like cooking, um, stuff like that. And also, I think that, uh, w- was this question about self-care? I can't remember. Yeah, it was like about self-care and like how you, um, okay. how you deal with the hard things about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also I go to therapy and I, I it took me like what, f- 15 years to find a sex worker, um, positive therapist but I'm glad I did it took the pandemic to find someone but um yeah so it takes it takes a lot but I think even if you know I was a plumber I would still need a support system it's just kind of hard especially right now Mm -hmm. um just to like have have balance and feel like okay Mm -hmm. did everyone answer that I think so one thing I think is important for all this for all this time that I've done this is to um, it's to just really sort of like separate my self worth from like the labor of sex work a little bit and just be like um, okay so maybe I'm not like the hottest fat girl in porn because like clearly look at my friends my God I'm gay I get it you know I know what my friends look like my God so maybe it's not about being the prettiest fat performer maybe like my job is to demonstrate sex for people to look at and it actually doesn't matter if I'm the most glamorous in the room or not um and like maybe I mean obviously like it's offensive and sexist but like you know those um those like street side strip clubs where the sign says 99 beautiful women and one ugly one I try it like I'll be like all right so maybe I'm maybe I'm the ugly one who cares I'm still getting paid like I'm still here. There's still a place for me in this industry, even if I'm not the most, if even if I'm not in the glamour category or the babe category, like the world still needs to see people fucking. So I'm here for that. Um, and that's, and at that point I was like, who cares if people think I'm the hottest or not at that point, Hey, my job is to meet this goal. Um, and, at, and that even benefits me in the sense that like, I'm not competing with my friends or collaborators anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I am like graciously, lovingly, you know, worshiping their beauty and being a part of the fun and not being like, well, where am I on this list? Cause that's not really important. Mm-hmm. What's important is like trying to like get to like 40 hours a week, you know, that's what's important. It's really not about collaborate. It's not really about competition. So if you can try it, I try to center myself around those things, which clearly come from like previous deficits, right? I did, I did not feel this way when I started, I was miserable and always comparing myself to other people, but I've trained myself now to just be like, no, but I, I, even if I was the ugly one in the room, that's fine. I'm still here. And like, I think that really helps and be like, it's, it's cool. It's not a big deal. Um, and I think I take more risks also in my job and my art because I'm I'm now also not afraid to get ugly on camera. So I am very wild on camera and I think it benefits my work. That's something I'm trying really hard to um to to unlearn is I have to be pretty on camera. I'll take mm-hmm. 500 photos and then my only fans will only see 40 of them. Cause I'm like, oh my gut, my gut looks so huge here. Or, mm-hmm. oh, you can, I like I have a skin tag under my arm. I'm like, oh, you can see that. Or sometimes I'll avoid um, uh, certain faces. Cause I'm like, oh, you can see my teeth and stuff. I, I, I really want to break out of trying to look pretty all the time so I can make more realistic content and, and you know and really express myself through it without worried about oh I you know I need to mm-hmm. look a certain way for my audience to appreciate mm-hmm. it it was debilitating it did get to a debilitating point for me where I couldn't even cam because I was like I don't want to get ready like I don't want to like have to compete with all of these people for that so being able to be on camera now you know it's different like I am able to like sort of get through the insecurities 
of being the prettiest little window in the cam index, you know. Um. So then I have a question for everyone, I guess, um, I guess more so advice. Um, do you all ever, um, like, uh, for those of you who do cam shows, do you ever um, find, I guess, like sometimes I'll turn down cam shows if I don't have my makeup on. Like, do you find that that makes a difference or do you feel like when, when someone wants to see you, you know, they just want to see you and, you know, get that bag and, you know, stop, you know, being so hard on yourself. Like, oh, I can't get on camera right now because I don't have my wig on and I don't have my makeup on and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I work mostly at this point in my career, I like do mostly regulars and my, and so I don't go on cam a lot, except I go on cam a lot, but I don't advertise that I'm on cam because I just have people requesting shows and um, I, or interactions or whatever it is that they want. And um, most of them, I will just say like, well, I'm not like camera ready and they're like, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> you know, you don't need your makeup on. I mean, I did a cam show today, um, getting out of the shower. And what I did was, uh, I was like, I just got out of the shower and he's like, that's cool. So I turn on my camera and I'm like brushing my hair and putting my makeup on and like chatting with him. <laughs> and that's, that was fine. You know, like I wasn't even like dress dress, much less like have makeup on. So, um, I find, but maybe my perspective is different because I run more of like a, a regular business um, instead of like a big cam show business, but I don't know. What about the rest of you? So for me, like I always have makeup on camera ready before I even log online. Mm -hmm. um, and I do have people request for like all natural types of shows, which I definitely do, um, but more so in a private setting and not because mm -hmm. I'm embarrassed, but I like to separate um, I, like, I feel like my actual face is my face. So I like to keep that to myself. Mm -hmm. And so I do my face up for work. Um, you don't see me like walking around like this or like big ass lashes all around like <laughs> family events and things like that. Like I'm a lot more toned down. Um, so it's fun for me to get ready like that, but I never feel like I need it. But at the same time, I'm like, they're used to it. So if I stop doing it now, what might happen? <laughs> but Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I can, but I can deeply relate. I mean, I think those were the insecurities that I was speaking to earlier. It was just like, I think I ended up having to stop camming because I was just like, I just can't be in the beck and call like that. Mm -hmm. It might also have to do with being transgender. So like my femme, I am femme, but like my, like, I work under the guise of a cis woman. I think that's the best way to describe it. Like when I'm at work, I'm a cis woman. You can she me all you want. It doesn't matter. Like when I'm not on camera, I'm like a dude. So like, there's like this whole other process. Like there's this whole other me. Mm -hmm. um, and actually that feels really, it feels like privileged space to see that person. So um, yeah, I have, a, it is a big transformation to go from me to courting trouble. And so, yeah, it's, I have lost money because of my own insecurities about doing natural mm -hmm. one, one on one. For a long time, I wouldn't, um, and I, I still struggle with. I'm getting better at it. I wouldn't. I would not do full nude. Um, like I'm like mm -hmm. you can see whatever you want, but I have to keep some type of something on me. Mm -hmm. So like I'll lift up my shirt or I'll pull down my shirt, but I have to keep the shirt on. So I want to touch on that because a lot of people for a long time thought that I didn't get nude. Um, but that's because I always hit it behind a paywall because I always knew how valuable a fat body was online and in yep. this industry. And so a lot of people would be like, oh, Destiny doesn't even get naked. You can't even see her belly. You're just not paying enough to see these things. Because I promise you, like live shows, I do more like custom videos and live shows fully naked than anything else. And it's, it's very, it's like another thing that's like very intimate and private that only select few people who want to experience that intimacy with me can it, like have and you can't find it all over the internet because I do it this way it's a lot more private and it also kind of protects my content out there yeah that's what I was gonna say is when you do go fully nude like charge like 30 bucks for those pictures because mm -hmm. your first nudes are gonna be super popular I hope they were <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I released them uh, two years ago. I did like a photo set of, I think, 100 photos for $100 or something like that. Anyway, yeah. it did really, really well. It, it, it really did. People were like, oh, mm. my God, finally, you're naked and I don't have to pay for a whole show. <laughs> 
I remember a, a reviewer, April, you'll remember this guy. I think his name is like Rob or something. I remember the first time I talked to him, I was just getting ready to put out Lesbian Curves, um, which I've now put out four of, but I started it back in like 2012 or 2013 or something like that. And that's the lesbian BBW film series that I did. Um, and he was just like, please, please just take your clothes off, like be naked. And I was just like, what is this obsession? What is going on here, Rob? And Rob was just like, nobody ever takes their clothes off. And they're always wearing like something in the middle. I'm like, this is BBW porn. And I'm like, you mean to tell me that they're hiding their tummies in the BBW porn, Rob? And Rob was like, yes, they're hiding their tummies in the BBW porn. And I was like, how is this happening? Guilty. <laughs> I am guilty too. <laughs> well, and I was guilty too. Cause I was like, oh, I don't like a corset or I'll just bring this dress down to here. Mm -hmm. And like, I'll have like the pussy and the ass and the tits out. And like, great. I was also, I worked at a strip club, like a peep show where you had to nipples and clit and pussy out at all times. So I would always wear something in the middle. Cause you know what? I did. It's the same thing about being trans. Like I didn't, I didn't want to be like the fat person. I just, I just wanted to make money. Okay. So like just tried to fit in as much as possible because this isn't a luxury game for me. This is my rent money. Um, and so it was at that, I had to make like a really specific choice at that time I was like if I want to make really captivating BBW porn that like the fans are gonna like like I think we need to get naked mm -hmm. so that's been like the rule of lesbian curves is like you have to get naked <laughs> <laughs> I know that doesn't seem like it's a big thing but I if this is a body this is a body uh mm -hmm. market or something it is a body body genre it's a body genre mm -hmm. so yeah. You don't have to, but for me, that was a real turning point of just like the fans want to see us head to toe. They want to see the side profile. They don't care if you have a big gut or not. Some of, some of them will even pay you to gain weight and like, you don't have to go down that route, but they're there. Mm -hmm. I think there's that, everybody um, out there. Yeah. I actually found, especially when I was camming, like very early in, um, when I first came into this, I did a lot more camming than I do now. And I found that one of the things that was interesting is like the very things that I was super self-conscious about, like my belly or, you know, whatever my cellulite, those were the things that like people really liked and <laughs> really wanted to see. And that like very much changed the way that I thought about my own body. Cause I didn't Another thing I'd like to touch on is like my body changed a lot after I had a child. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I had a child while I was in the industry. And so that was, that was a whole journey. Like I had a new center of gravity for nine months and, <laughs> and then outside, like I was milking and I like, my body changed a lot. So the industry has seen my body go through a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. That's I canned when I was pregnant and that was like a very interesting experience. Because uh, I've been planning to start a family and I, I keep wondering what, you know, that's going to be like um, um, as I continue to do sex work. Because I, I don't plan to stop when I have kids. <laughs> I definitely think there's a market for pregnant plus size, pregnant fat. I don't think that's an issue at all. Mm -mm. I think every single model in this industry has made money when they got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Good, lucrative time. People used to say, Oh, Destiny, like you should breastfeed because you're going to save so much money. I made money breastfeeding because my tits are just like always squirting milk. And it was great <laughs> for Cam. <laughs> so 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, Annie, is there any other questions from the audience? No other questions. Okay. Then I, it's five till. So I want to go through. And just, wait, what? Did you Can want to I just say that this went by way too fast, yeah. my friends? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I want to really like sincerely thank all of the panelists. It was really great to hear about your experiences. And I think it's really, I think the work that all of you do is really brave. And I think just being ourselves in the world is a brave thing to do and being sexy in ourselves and uh, fucking on camera is a brave thing to do. So I commend all of you. And um, I also want to remind audience members that, um, that we have a Patreon and we also have a, um, Venmo and Cash App and uh, 
PayPal. So if you tip um, the panelists, we will split up anything that you send. And Courtney, do you have anything they else? Will, they will be going home with money today because we don't like to leave anyone open-handed, <laughs> uh, empty-handed. So open your wallets because we should recoup that. Um, <laughs> If you want to buy advertising on peepshowmedia.com, hit me up because we have ads for sale. Mm -hmm. Peepshowmedia.com, if you have not been reading the website, um, has been posting news stories, articles, features, and interviews pretty heavily multiple times a week ever since uh, April, May, mm -hmm. June, something like that. We've been going really strong, but we're still in our first year. So all the good vibes, all the positivity and all the support you can throw our way is like so much appreciated. It means more to us now than it ever will in the future. Yeah. Whatever did in the past, that's the truth. So even five bucks helps. What else? I, uh, announcements. That's it. Yeah, we Peep have a great intern who's there. Five. So say hi to Liz because Liz is invisible right now, but is very, very active as our um, as our intern has been doing really great work and um, has also taken over the TikTok and the Instagram. So TikTok and Instagram for Peep Show is way, way better than it used to be, and that it will probably ever be again <laughs> after <laughs> she graduates. <laughs> so, so check it out now. Um, and the panelists, do you want to give everybody your socials? I want to know like the work social, like the fun, the fan social, and like your most recent product for sale, mm. new release. Okay, so I'll go first. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, or TikTok at Destiny with two Ds underscore Diaz. And you can find me on OnlyFans at OnlyDestiny.com. My many vids is DestinyDiaz.ManyVids.com. And what was the last thing you said? New release. Ah, yes. I just put out a video this week of uh, like a role play video of me being recognized by one of my professors on a Zoom call. So that's available on many of us right now. <laughs> Do you guys have the same fan, Jesse? I know. <laughs> oh, I, get all, I get all those requests. <laughs> um, Shai? Oh, uh, so um, I'm on OnlyFans um, at OnlyFans.com slash Shy Spells. Twitter, Shy Spells. Snapchat, Shy Spells. Um, I'm also on TikTok, Shy Spells. Um and uh, shyspells.minivids uh dot com and um oh, I'm trying to remember my most recent video. Or when is your next stream eight show? Um, when is the next time you go live? I, I don't have a schedule. Um, I'm, I'm hoping this. I just, I just the school just started back this week. We're just gonna need to search you on streaming and, and <laughs> yeah, set, um, our, set the alerts. Buy a custom uh, dildo from um primal hardware and so i'm i'm working on some alien uh role play thing so stay tuned for that <laughs> thing um for me you can find me on instagram twitter and only fans at the april flores also same handle cash up and venmo um uh, my latest scene is just a solo like all my other scenes have been <laughs> uh for a while <laughs> So you can do that. What I really like focusing on is the one-on-one -on -one video calls because mm -hmm. um, I love connecting with someone that way. So if you want to have a private show with me, um, email me bookapril at protonmail.com. And yeah, thanks for having me. This was great. Uh, Courtney, do you want to plug yourself? Oh, they're all different. So um, <clears throat> OnlyFans dot com slash Courtney Trouble and then my TikTok is Trouble Dish or Troubled Ish whatever you want <laughs> um and I just started that and maybe I'll do the busset challenge if I get enough followers uh, I, didn't my new, I, I don't know what my new put it is. together for me that's <laughs> <laughs> my newest release is whatever is live at troublefilms.com right now no. photos <laughs> uh, I'm Jesse Sage. I'm on Twitter at Sapiotextual and OnlyFans as Jesse as Sapiotextual, OnlyFans.com Sapiotextual on minivids at jessiesage.minivids.com. Let's see. Uh my newest 
thing actually is not is not new but it's newly released on trouble films is a oh. very sexy married anal scene <laughs> your an your anal scene yeah um and that's about it i don't know i'm on night flirt sex panther uh verified call i like to do custom videos and uh phone calls and one-on-one chats nice um yeah so thanks everybody thank you for the people in the audience we really appreciate you being here and we're also going to put this uh within the next couple weeks on youtube and on um the podcast just the, we'll pull the audio from the podcast so there will be lots of ways for people to revisit these conversations 